tag team action. The Steiner brothers. Okay, before you say it, okay? okay. Before you say it. So we there's, there's a match, and I knew to watch it, and I started playing it, mm-hmm. and I start watching it, and all of a sudden, like I was watching it, and I was like, okay, there's there's Rick and Scott, and I know that's Hase, because Hase's yeah. always look the same. Yeah. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I just told him, I'm like, who the fuck is that other handsome man? Really? I was like, who is that? And I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm not going to look it up yet. I'm just going to try and figure out who the fuck this is. He's Why don't I remember famous. this? Why don't I remember this? And finally, I was like, God damn it, who is this? It's fucking KG Mudo. Yeah. I mean, I would have figured out if I watched like five more minutes when he tagged in. Because once you he... see him work, it's yeah. like... Especially the finish. But my God, I mean... First off, you know he had the uh, he had he had multiple he had the Keiji Muda and the Great Muda, yeah. And then you know as the Great Muda got older, his hair fell out, yeah. And then you know he became the bald headed, gray goateed, you know guy that just does nothing with dragon screws, and uh, it was like Scott looked the same, Rick looked the same, Hase looked the same, Muda looked like <laughs> so. So different. But then he got in the ring, and it's like he was the great Muda when he could move. Yeah. And if you watch a lot of great Muda of late, I mean, a guy can barely walk. Uh-huh. But what he can do is fall very rapidly. Sure. And so he, every move that he did involved falling rapidly. So he would do, like, you know, the, the elbow drop, dragon which is falling yeah. rapidly. The dragon screw, which is falling rapidly. And so he was able to have the like these these shockingly good matches, given his level of mobility. But then you go back and you watch him at this time, and it's like, holy fuck, look at this guy. Oh, yeah. Like, what an athlete. Holy shit. He was so great in this match. And then this was everything that we talked about when we watched 1995 Nitro. These matches that were like UFC fights. It's like, yeah, actually, you don't know what the fuck's going to happen. And <laughs> yeah. I'll bet you anything that nobody in this match really knew what was going to happen. I'm sure they had like the finish and maybe a spot or two. But man, that Rick Steiner is one scary motherfucker. Mm-hmm. But he would get in the ring and he would like just do wrestling. And then Scott would tag in. And it was just fucking carnage. <laughs> it was like it was like Goldberg in 1997. Yeah. Like, just a fucking wild man and he'd grab you and he'd just fucking toss you all over the place and he'd sell a little bit and then he'd just fucking run you over i was just watching this going you're doing the job aren't you yeah you're fucking killing these guys and then he hit that goddamn square driver Uh, i don't know how hasi went on i thought he was dead and the crowd went forty thousand people thought he was dead. crazy for that fucking move i enjoyed this match immensely it was a lot of fun, and mm-hmm. it was a it was it was a it was a spectacular. It was a spectacle. Is what it was there a spectacular. Is, so essentially, they put a bunch of cool moves into a hat, and like they drew a move out of a hat, would do that move, whatever it was. There was no rhyme. But or reason. Scott pulled more moves out of the hat. Sure, he mm-hmm. got and, four moves for everybody else's one, and the, and and the best moves. Yeah, but uh, there was no rhyme or reason to anything. I, 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 talk about spam and finishers, by the way. They were spam and finishers. When guys nowadays talk about the Young Bucks or whoever, it's like, Jesus, so, could they have kicked out of more moves in this match? Fuck. Yeah, and, 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 and Mudo before the match, I thought looked like a man headed to the gallows, like he knew he was doomed. Oh, he was. And he didn't even take the square driver. So for those of you not familiar, I mean, it's, you see it. Law, Tom does it now. Filthy Tom does it now. And, and Brian Cage does it now. And God bless those men. They don't do it like Scott did. I don't know how Scott Steiner never killed anyone. Yeah. He lifts him up like a... Tom high... does more of the uh, the Hakuto driver. Or it's like on your called. shoulder? Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, he kind of lifts him up. and then, I know because I took it, but it was definitely not a square driver. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he lifts you up like a vertical suplex, and then instead of dropping backwards or throwing you down onto your back, he sits down on his ass, and you fall from six feet onto your brain. Yeah. And before he does it, he goes... Wait till you see this one. He ain't getting up from this one. He shouts. Yeah. And it's Tokyo, so even though it's forty thousand people there, they're, they're, they're quiet. Their parts. This is the way Japanese fans are. And he hits this fucking square driver. Forty thousand screams of terror, because they thought they see one of their heroes. By the way, not just a guy. They thought Hiroshi Hase was dead. The best stops. <laughs> Everyone like sits back and makes sure, like, like the ref grabs his hand and shakes it. Are you alive? 
And uh, eventually, the match just... In fact, he's up on his feet like 30 seconds later doing exploders. Because, <laughs> again, random. Um, I mentioned the ramp earlier. There's a part where they go outside in the ramp. And I believe Hase and Muto used, I don't know, 80 yards, however long this was. But they sprint all the way back up to the stage. And they turn around. And they sprint all the way down. And it's a long fucking way. Remember when Charles Robinson was that running ref at Mania that one time? Yes. And he's running as fast as he can for about 20 minutes. This is what that looked like. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, or uh, Lancelot storming the castle of Holy Grail. He's just running and running and running and running and running. And he hits this lariat. But the thing is, he did a square driver. And uh, the world changed. Like the, the wrestling has not been the same since this square driver. This match goes like twelve minutes after that, and doesn't come close to that kind of intensity. They did a bunch of stuff. Mudo does the backbreaker and the moon salt. Uh, a thousand suplexes from everybody, and the Steiners do a bunch of press slams. And finally, they do the combo DDT for Hase, and then the Steiner bulldog for Hase, and they pin him. And Mudo is just a little bit late breaking up the pin. And uh, as you noted, it was a spectacle, but it was kind of a mess of a spectacle. This was spectacular is what this was. I went into this match. I knew I had seen this match before, and I was like, I turned the match on, and I said, like, where's Kensuke Sasaki? I had seen the Collision in Korea match with ah, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. Steiners and Hiro Hase. Uh, Sasaki on this match, by the way, teamed with Hawk to face the Jurassic Powers. Yeah, <laughs> we should uh, we should have watched that one, too, but... Um, uh, anyway, I was wrong. I had not seen this. Yeah. And when uh, S- Scott hit that square driver, um, I-, I screamed. Yeah. And and people came running to check on me. And I and, and I'm and I'm and I'm looking for the remote so I can rewind it to scream again. And uh, you texted every- us screaming too. I did. <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, <laughs> he's not joking. Craig texted us a scream. Yes, um, I, I was very excited. Um, they didn't. When this match started, it was uh, they were doing a collegiate match. Nobody hit the ropes until yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I, Scott was in. Or Rick Scott was in first, and Rick tagged in, and then uh, Scott tagged back in after that, and then they started hitting the ropes. It was a good uh, seven minutes before the ropes were were ran. Um, it was it was a collegiate style match, and then as soon as Scott tagged in the second time, it was time to dump people on their heads, and uh, <laughs> it was fantastic. Go out of your way and see this soon. Other than the uh, driver, which was awesome, there was a there was a move a little later where uh, Rick Steiner gave the guy one of those like spinning backbreaker deals, tilt to world slam, yes, yeah, yeah, spins him around, lands him on his knee. The guy's momentum stopped instantly on his knee and he was frozen there and then he slowly slides off like a cartoon you know like, squee <laughs> <laughs> like a bird hitting a window yeah it was <laughs> yeah i thought that guy was dead too he looked like it it's, it hurt but uh yeah yeah any match where it's just the signers throwing guys around for 15 minutes is great okay with me hey if you love this clip have i got a deal for you wrestlingobserver.com Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. 
all for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.